Hey guys, I'm so, so, so excited to bring to you Sofia Skrversky. She's been dancing for over 20 years. She's a remarkable, remarkable dancer. Uh, while I read out to you a little bit about her, I want to also show you some videos of the things that she's done. She's just absolutely remarkable. She dances with her partner, Carlos, nowadays, but she's also launched her own company uh, in 2016, and she's basically trained in jazz, salsa, heels, and theater arts cabaret. She's also, along with her partner, been the Canadian champion in professional theater arts cabaret. She was also invited to the season 13 of America's Got Talent, along with her partner as well. And they were also, her and her partner were selectively um, chosen to participate in the Blackpool Dance Festival in England, which happens to be, for those who don't know much about dance, the number one most famous and prestigious ballroom dance competition in the world in England. So that was really, really exciting. They've won over 12 competitions in the past thir three years. And so they're just busy, busy, busy. On top of that, they're consistently hired every weekend to teach workshops and coach dancers and perform on different dance congresses and special events around the world. So I am so happy that she's made the time to share with us her journey to where she, she is today. And uh, she's got a lot of exciting things coming up for her. And so the fact that uh, she made this time, I'm really glad that she'll be sharing her story with us. And I hope you enjoy it as well. So welcome, Sophia. I'm so excited that you're here. This is going to be such an incredible episode. You're not just an all around beautiful woman, but you're also an incredibly talented dancer and passionate artist. Thank so you. thank you for being here with us. Uh, I'm so, so just happy to, to be here. Oh, great. I'm so, so just to kick things off on the lighter side, I wanted to ask you, uh, what is something that we will always find in your fridge? Uh, something that you will always find in my fridge. So tofu, always <laughs> very <laughs> random. I recently transitioned into being um, a vegetarian uh, wow. slash vegan, but not fully. Um, so you'll see a lot of tofu in my fridge, a lot of vegetables. <laughs> That's and, amazing. Um, yeah. So uh, almond Good milk, like stuff like that. Yeah. Are you enjoying the new diet? Yes, I definitely feel lighter in my body. Um, I used to eat a lot of chicken, especially, and I can't believe that I actually became a vegetarian. Like, I, I, it was always oh. in my mind, like, one day, one day, and it actually happened. Um, I like it. I really enjoy it. I feel lighter in my body, especially it's, it's really good for dance, but I, I don't feel super heavy, which I normally did after, you know, me eating meat. Yeah, and, you know, it's often the conversation is in, like, can a vegetarian vegan diet sustain like such an active lifestyle like Absolutely. the one that you have? So I'm sure you had questions around that as well. So that's great. Absolutely. Well, good for you. <laughs> but you know what? I want to now dive right into, so I want to hear a little bit about, and I think people are just uh, really excited to hear more about your story. So your journey along to getting to where you are today, which is a remarkable place in the world of dance. And uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about how you got here, your all the excitement and all the things that you'd want to share with us about where you are today in life. First of all, like, I just want to say that I think it's so cool that, you know, I'm even being interviewed and I'm, at, I'm being asked, you know, to be interviewed um, about my, my dance career. I remember way back when, what I would imagine one day, you know, one day I'll be interviewed on my dance career. And at that point oh, wow. I was nowhere, nowhere near where I am now, but I always like imagined it. And it's so cool that it's, it's happening so I just want to put that out there first That's beautiful so thank you for thinking of me for this interview of course. Uh, so where do I start I mean I guess should I, I should start from ground zero yeah, yeah. give it all to us <laughs> all right so I guess my story is a little bit unique um, and I'll explain to you why so I started dancing I started training at the age of five uh, I started with baby ballet like kids ballet uh, from there, I transitioned into jazz. So jazz was more so like my, my training. Um, so from the age of five, um, so five to six, I was doing ballet. Six to 12, I was doing, I was dancing jazz, uh, training in jazz. 
Wow. Uh, after about 12, at about 12 years old, I quit dance completely. Um, oh. It was just a time and yeah, I completely quit dance. And it was because one, it was, um, it got too, too, um, too expensive for my parents to pay for the lessons. Yeah. Um, as well as the costumes that were really, really pricey. And, you know, at the time, my father had like to raise three children. So it was a lot like to, to have a hobby like that was yeah. a lot of money. To for. So there was that. So I stopped. That was one of the reasons. And the other reason was, you know, I was a young preteen. My friends are, you know, all going out, hanging out. And I was kind of not really super involved in that. And that was a big reason why I quit dance as well. And I'm like, you know what, maybe it's time, like I'm too old for dance, you know, I just thought it's time to stop. So between the age of 12 to about 16, I wasn't dancing, like no training, nothing, oh. nothing, nothing. Actually till about 17, no 18. Well, I can't remember, it was a while ago. <laughs> I, I wasn't dancing at all. And I just remember, you know, I was, doing the regular teenager thing, going out and all that stuff. Always still feeling like inside there was like a little void that mm. I was really, I was upset at myself that I didn't continue pursuing dance because it was, it was really special for me. Um, where was I? So between oh. 12 to 17, wasn't dancing, just doing the regular teenager thing. Between 17 to 20 to 21, I would say I had a really, uh, tough time in my life where I, you know, my friends were already going to university. They were like so set on what they wanted to do. And I was nowhere mm -hmm. near that. Like I was nowhere near that place. And I just did not know I, what I wanted to do in school. If I wanted to go to university or college. I'm like, what the heck, what, I, what am I going to take? There's yeah. like nothing out there that interests me, you know? And so, um, wow. I just completely got back into dancing um, and it was because of my wow. sister. So um, at the age of 17, my sister took me to a salsa club. <laughs> a salsa like club, good yeah. old big sisters, our, our younger sisters, yeah. She, she's actually my older sister. So she inspired oh. me to start dancing. She was the one dancing before me. She's five years older than me. So, um, so she was salsa dancing a lot of the time with my cousin and uh, she invited me to go to a salsa club. <laughs> and I remember walking into that club and being like, oh, I was so in love. It was just like instant, instant. I'm like, I was hooked from that day. <laughs> I would be going, I know what of a lie, like between five to six days a week, I would be going out dancing. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> I ended up losing like, probably 15 to 20 pounds. I was a little bit heavier, like before not dancing. I was about 135 at my heaviest. It's not heavy by any means, but yeah, for me it was because I'm quite yeah. short. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> so I, I got heavily into salsa dancing and I became obsessed with it. Started to lose a lot of weight, started to gain a lot of confidence. And I started getting mm -hmm. feedback from a lot of people. And they would say, you know, you have something very special about you. You, you, you're very unique in the way that you move and the way that you dance and and hearing that really like it made me feel really special because I didn't always believe in myself growing up especially between the age of you know 12 to that time that I stopped dancing yeah I in my mind at that time you have to be you have to be a technically hardcore trained dancer and those especially in that time as a teenager and I I completely dropped it so in my mind I'm like all right my time is up yeah it's like yeah um, that's it that I got to think of something else to do. And that just, that thought was like, oh, what am I going to do anyway? So got heavily into it, into debt, into salsa dancing, started to get feedback from a lot of people. And from there I joined, um, I joined my first dance team. And wow. so with the girl that I actually performed with, you remember, uh, Mira, it was at your event. Yeah. So she, it was her dance company, like um, this was a couple of years before we performed at your event. And um, so I, I started taking lessons with her. And then from there, I started joining different schools, started taking my training a little bit more seriously. And it got a little bit more hardcore. And I couldn't believe that I was dancing again. It was like, am I dreaming? It was wow. obviously the best decision I've ever made. And it was ever since then, I just kept going and I kept pushing myself. 
to the next level, taking different um, uh, train, training in different dance styles, um, working on my flexibility, my strength and all that. And um, here I am today. A big part of it, I forgot to mention, I met my dance partner, uh, Carlos. Yeah. Since I met him, everything kind of kind of changed. And that's when really things started to really take off. So it's kind of like everything led me to the moment of meeting him. Yeah. And then when we met, like the energies kind of just clicked. Like he had something that I needed energetically and I had something that he needed. And together we kind of just like, like we skyrocketed really quickly together. And it's just been wow. such a, I'm so blessed um, that I'm even sitting here with you talking about the fact that I'm a, like I dance for a living. Like it's just little me would be like, <laughs> pretty cool so I mean that's kind of it's a lot but it's kind of the gist of it so I that's why no. I think my story is a little bit unique because I wasn't like technically trained from like baby to like you know what I'm saying till now totally yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more so like persevere like I know that I like I saw something in me people saw something in me and because of that I trusted it and I just kept going and it just goes to show that you don't you don't truly need what you think you need yeah. You know what I'm Which saying? Is such a powerful realization. Yeah. Wow. So that's, you, that's my story. <laughs> you were really guided. And so at the time when you met Carlos, was he also looking for a dance partner? So you guys were both like ready to take both. It your... was like the time, the time was perfect. He was actually dancing with um, another, another partner at the time. Um, it wasn't working out with them anymore. Just the, like they're, they weren't resonating anymore. And uh, I actually contacted him first because I saw him perform um, with, his, with his previous partner on stage. And I was absolutely blown, blown away at like the level of difficulty, the artistry. It was just so wow. And I was so moved. And normally, like, I don't get moved like that quickly with dance because I guess because you see it, you kind of see it all. But I was really moved by, yeah. by him. And I contacted him uh, for lessons, actually, to learn so he specializes in um lifts and tricks which is like cabaret overall he was already a, a canadian champion he became a world champion with his student like he's he was already up there and me going to him was i was his student going to him i was wow. a student yeah and we ended up um i agreed to do a, a competition with him it was a pro-am competition actually it was a oh, student wow. and teacher uh competition uh, so we did really, really well. It was so hard. Like the training for that, my body yeah. was, I thought I was a great dancer. I thought it was so good. <laughs> but that like, really showed me. Oh my God, I got this. <laughs> I get to my first class. I'm sweating buckets because <laughs> he's making me do like jumps and like core exercises. Oh. And I'm like, <gasps> but, but, but I, was, I thought it was good. And he was laughing at me. I'm like sweating. I look so bad. Anyway, so amazing. yeah, so we progressed. We did our first uh, student teacher competition. And um, after the competition, he came up to me. He kept telling everybody this. He's like, Sophia, you outshined me 100%. No student has ever done that. I did not expect that because in the studio, normally, like I'm more quiet and like I don't really go full out. I mean, I do, but I guess I didn't know him well enough yet. I was still kind of like reserved. The moment I got on stage, <laughs> the moment I got on stage, I'm like, I'm in it now. I'm going to <laughs> yeah. kill. And I just went hard. I went so hard. I, I think I did over, overpower him a little bit, but the, the show ended up Good for you. amazing. Wow. And a few weeks later, this is yeah, probably two weeks, three weeks later after um, that competition, you know, we went for coffee, asked him to go for coffee. And at that point he asked me if I wanted to be his professional dance partner. Wow. And I remember feeling at that time, you know, that, you know, that feeling when you're, you're really at the right place at the right time. Like, mm -hmm. it's just so, you know, it like in that moment, yeah. that's what happened to me in that moment. It was like screaming inside of me. Everything that I did led up to that moment. I like remember putting it out in the universe, like one day I'm gonna have a dance partner. I just kept saying it over and over and over and over and over. And I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'm gonna keep putting it out there. And it was just so strong, the desire wow. that it happened. You know, it really happened. And ever and I said yes, so scared, <laughs> so scared. <because laughs> you I knew what I was getting into. He's like, so this is what you're gonna be getting into. We're gonna be training four or five days a week, three hours at a time. And I'm like, uh-huh, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> anything at that point I was ready for anything I'm like this is my dream it's right in front of me literally I will do 
anything yeah. where like, I will do anything that you want me to do. So I, I said, yes, we started training super, super, super hard. Wow. Um, and just things just start to take off. Yeah. It was, it's been, it's That's been insane. Journey, and yeah. And so how long has it been that you guys have been dancing then just to get the timeline? Has it been a while? Uh, I would say almost six years in, um, in August. Wow. Yeah. Guess, almost six years. So it's been that crazy. Is, that, you know what, that, that touches and warms my heart because it is, it is such a journey of like that faith and that putting it out there and having that consistent, pers you know, just persistence. Faith. Yeah. absolutely you have actually, to have like a mix of faith sorry sorry no, no, yeah, yeah. you you have to have that like mix of like faith like blind faith and you have to have that natural urge and that pull that desire to to just want want to genuinely go for it it yeah. can't be based on like what did he, he like they really want me to do that or he really wants me it has to really come from inside and that way it's more powerful no. Yeah, and and actually, just from you speaking about it, you can just you I you can feel that level of confidence that you have in that journey that you've had, and learning to really trust in that in that in that process. So that's beautiful. So actually, if you were to say like you would attribute your success to something, what would you say would be like the word or or I don't know something that would be like you know what this this really spoke for me. This is what kept me going. My stubbornness. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really stubborn. I like, I'm really, so when I want something, I go for it and I don't care who says otherwise. Like if it's even growing up, like my parents, like between the age of like 17 to 20, they didn't I, like, they, they're like, what is this girl going to do with her life? And then when I started to dance, like a lot, mm -hmm. they were like, you know, she's, she's just like wasting her time for precious time. They, I know they were coming from a place of worry that they, they genuinely wanted me to do well and succeed and you know make a living so i don't hold it against them i did it at one point i really of like course, yeah. wanted to like prove to my dad that oh i can make it and i held it against him but i like the like the older i became the wiser i became i realized that you know he was coming from a place of love so uh stubbornness i'm very stubborn and when i want something i go for it you know so what? that's what i would attribute my success to i guess <laughs> that's amazing and so actually on that, so what were some of your toughest moments or decisions or challenges that you've had to kind of have on your journey? You say like, you know what, these were the, the ones that made uh, the list, like these three, two, one, whatever it was, maybe it was only one, you know? Well, what really truly stands out to me is the belief that I had for so many years that, you know, if you're not, you know, technically trained from um, this time mm. to this time, then that's it it's over for you. Like I've had, I've held on to that belief for very many years and only like the last little while I've like started to like let it go that, you know, it's okay that like, I almost felt embarrassed before that, you know, in comparison to all of the other, you know, young, beautiful trained dancers, I would almost feel like an embarrassment that I, I don't have what you have. But what now that mm. what I realize is that I, my story is actually quite unique because I don't have that. And because I am now where I am, you know, it made me realize that it's okay that I didn't have those years. So that would be the tough, those were the toughest moments for me, like in my late teen years, you know, just really just being so hard on myself that I, I didn't push hard enough to, to train. And yeah, so that's what it is. Wow. But it actually, you bring up a really nice point with, um, with, because now you speak to a whole other group of dancers that don't have that technical training, but have that passion and that desire to really want to succeed, which your story so connects with that. And you kind of break that limit for them in, that, in their own mind as well, right? So you don't Absolutely. just do it for yourself, but you also do it for so many other women, which is beautiful. So, Absolutely. Yeah. I'm actually curious. How, so, because you said you were dancing this from this from a very young age. So did you always know that this was for you, like in your heart? I remember, so I have like a, a very like sharp memory in my mind of when I was, um, I think it was about eight or seven or eight. And I was, I was in, I was in my dance class and I remember, um, we were finishing up our class. It was, a uh, my jazz class. We we're finishing up my class and then the ballerinas, like the ballet girls had mm -hmm. a class right after us. And I remember seeing, um, I think her name was Sarah. It was one, one beautiful ballerina. 
ballet dancer, I should say, um, you know, stretching and, and her toes are like going like this and she's just like in her zone. And I remember looking at her and I'm like, I was just so in awe and in love. I'm like, oh my God, like I wish I could be that, you know, one day I wish I could be a professional dancer. So in my heart, I always wow. knew that if I could be anything in the world, I would be a professional dancer. There's no doubt. There's nothing else that like screams more to me than, than, than dance. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> wow. This moment, it's, it's crazy how that happens. And then when you realize it, it's like, you just, yeah. And your heart's like burning for it after. And it's like, you can't deny the truth. No, yeah. you can't. I still, yeah. honestly, talking to you, it gives me goosebumps. I still can't believe that yeah. I could say that I'm a, I'm a full-time dancer. It's very crazy. <laughs> actually, because you, you have your own studio now. How's so that process actually, been? Oh. So I don't actually have physically my own studio. Um, so I teach classes at different locations, but it is my own company, like a Sophia yeah. Sky Dance Company. So I'm on to the seventh season now. So it's been, what, like four, year, four years. And I teach, uh, I teach ladies uh, of different ages. Um, I have different dance uh, levels as well. Uh, it's a, it's a perform training and performance program. So I train them in the beginning, I teach them choreography, and then uh, they perform it at the end at a few different events and venues. And we also travel with them. I travel with them. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah. That yeah. 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 I can see the smile on your face because you went from like obviously being a student to like completely being now a teacher. And now you get to bring that out in so many of, of your students Absolutely. and seeing them. And actually, what were some of your happiest moments on this journey outside of finding Carlos? I feel like that one was like, that was a big one. Yeah, <laughs> that was a big one. That's a huge one. Happiest moments. One that really sticks to my mind and I, I still get goosebumps like um, with, with that. Getting the email that we're invited as contestants on America's Got Talent. Like that was like, <laughs> like the little Sophie in me was like, are you kidding me right now? It was just, I remember dreaming of like, oh my God, and like, I don't know if I have ever, would ever have what it takes to be on a show like that. And then it happened. And how it happened was uh, that the senior casting director saw our video, um, Carlos and I performed in Blackpool. It was, that's also another one that I'll discuss. Blackpool is like a, the most prestigious ballroom competition in the world held in England. Wow. And uh, mm -hmm. we were invited as um, contestants in the cabaret exhibition category. So it's like 10 couples, from around the world we were one of them super super cool anyway so we performed a routine yeah it was super cool uh we performed our uh, black panther routine so i was a black panther like literally a black panther running around and doing lifts, <laughs> li lifts and tricks and some craziness and the beautiful. senior casting director saw that video on youtube randomly and they said that we loved it like we, they said we've seen so many other cabaret couples but yours was truly unique and we really would love to have you on the show. And I'm like, what do you mean? You mean we're gonna like just go on the show? She's like, yeah, you don't have to do any of the pre, the process of like the waiting and the, 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 you're gonna go straight to live stage with Simon Cowell and ha um, Howie. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> I was just like, couldn't believe it. And I'm like, what, Mel B? Like, that's a Spice Girl. Like, I love <laughs> Mel B. <laughs> she was you know? my home girl. <laughs> she was my home girl. Spice Girls, I was dancing, I was like pretending I was a Spice Girl. So, so that was definitely a big standout <clears throat> moment for me, um, as well as Blackpool being invited. Um, Carlos was already invited um, as a contest uh, contestant, contestant, competitor. Yeah you know what I mean, yeah. with his previous partner a couple year, uh, years before. And then when that partnership ended, he asked me, he's like, um, we're going to go to Blackpool this year. It's the most, the biggest competition in the world. Are you ready? I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> so he prepared me. We, pre well, I obviously I put a lot of my, my own work into it as well. Um, and we competed on that stage, which was mind blowing mind blowing the it's it's a really old ballroom um stadium like really yeah. really old everyone's in like ball gowns everyone is so like proper and and here i am like this, this <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> i've had yeah that was definitely a wow moment for me and we we did that two years in a row just i remember even when the music came on and the lights just came on it was so, the stage was huge it was a floor and there's so many people around in like levels. And I remember thinking little Sophie in the moment. I'm like, 
like am I dreaming like what the hell is this actually happening so those are two really um big moments in my life yeah you know I love that you make reference to little Sophie because it's true because it's like that's the imagination that playful part of us that's so beautiful actually and I'm curious now that you bring up these two obviously amazing moments what how do you get yourself ready when you're in like about to compete or like you're about to perform or in any like how do you actually get yourself like how you mentioned it earlier like you're like ah I brought it all out of me so my process um before I go on stage um so I really try to assess where I am like energetically and like mentally speaking so I really process where I am and if I feel a sense of like nerves or like my mind is like kind of going here and there. I kind of like center myself back into the moment and just like work on my breathing. I really just try and get myself to be as calm as possible. And I I visualize a lot. I visualize my routine. I listen to my music in my headphones. So like people looking at me from the outside, I look like, I look funny because I have my headphones in. I'm just like doing my thing. Um, (laughs) Yeah. So I'm really like connecting uh, to myself, to the music, like becoming one with it. Um, I try and tap into like my higher self in that moment Mm -hmm. so I can perform at my absolute best instead of just going like oh it is what it is it'll it'll I'm just gonna go for it no I really try and connect um, connect to myself in that moment and tap into um, you know feeling my most uh, powerful self that's my process before I compete for shows yeah I I don't do it as as much as I do it for competition but for shows pretty much the same thing like I do a lot of breathing I visualize I listen to my music I connect with my partner like we just kind of get into one energy one vibe and yeah it's been great so far yeah no, I can really feel that you guys have a and you yourself have a great like not you just know how to put yourself into state and, but actually I'm curious does it almost feel like when you're dancing for the, re- the real time like when you're actually competing and then you're actually performing does it almost feel like you've done it before because you've just played it so many times in your head or it always feels like a fresh time, like the new, the first time. It's some, it's, it's interesting. It's different every time. Sometimes like as soon as I'll get on stage and I'll feel like different, it'll feel like new. And sometimes it'll feel like, Oh, I know this so well. So each experience is, is, Mm -hmm. is different for me. Um, but I try and, and when I'm performing, like I, I really try and put my heart and soul into it and, and not come from a place of like, what does my face look like? Am I like, um, how do I say <laughs> yeah. I need to smile here. I need to do this there. No, I'm really just kind of like tapping into um, myself and like mm-hmm. what I'm feeling um, in connection to the music and the dance and in my partner. And it's really worked well for me. Like I've, we've got a lot of feedback from our audience um, that, you know, we connect so well to our audience. Like it's very emotional, the pieces. And like, we've had people come up to us crying mm-hmm. and we, we have, we've gotten a lot of standing ovations and almost all of our shows. I'm not even, I'm not saying this to brag, trust me, cause I'm not like that. And you know what, if you did, I'm glad that you do. <laughs> I'm really, yeah, I'm really not like that. I'm not cocky. I'm actually so shy, like believe it or not. And I'm converted. <laughs> Um, but we almost every show, every show we've had a standing ovation. Like it's been wow. powerful. It's been beautiful. So I miss that so much. Like being in quarantine right now, I'm like, I need the stage. <laughs> it's true. Actually, I can it's imagine that. Yeah. Wow. And you know what? I know that this journey was probably long, but were there, who were the men and women that really stood behind you? Like who really were like, I'm, you can do this. Um, outside of obviously yourself, because I can see that you were a big cheerleader for yourself. Well, you know, I would say my mom is my absolute biggest cheerleader. Like, <laughs> she's so funny. She like she has all of my pictures in her phone, and she always asks me, "Send me this picture. Send me this." She so she likes to like show everybody who I am, <laughs> and she so just beautiful. brags about me to. And like, it could be anyone, like the guy walking in the grocery store, putting stuff in the fridge. Like, it's just random. Like, this is my daughter. She's a professional and she's just, <laughs> she's been here. She's a champion. I'm like, mom, I'm like in sweat. <laughs> I'm in right now. You're embarrassing me. She's like, you have to, this is who you are. You worked so hard. I'm like, mom, not right now. Put the phone down. <laughs> she's very cute. That's amazing. Yeah. She's very, very cute. She's very loving. And she's just 
she's so proud of me. So she has been like my biggest, biggest fan and supporter. Uh, my father too, more so now he's coming around. I think it's because he sees that, you know, I've really put my heart and soul into it and there's a lot to show for it. So he's like, well, maybe she does know what she's doing. And, mm -hmm. and I didn't get that from him before, but I get that from him now. So he's really like excited about it. So my parents, uh, my best friends, um, who are really close to me, who always push me, even when I have my, my doubtful moments and I still have them. I'm like, oh my God, can mm -hmm. I do this? You know, so they're always pushing me and, and reminding me of, you know, my, my greatness. They're so beautiful, my friends. So I like to keep the people around me um, super, super close to my heart, like my best friends, my parents, my, my brother, my sister, and my dance partner. Those are the closest people right now in my life. Yeah, I can imagine that Carlos has also become someone very close. I mean, you guys train so often. So yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and were there any people in your journey that you, that you learned that weren't supporting you that you had to like evolve in being able to say, okay, you know what, this isn't serving me or I need Absolutely. to let this go? Mm -hmm. uh, well, obviously I had that whole complex with my father when I was younger where he, he just didn't really support my dance because he was coming from a place of obviously he wants me to do well in life. Uh, so I there was that time where I held that like against him, like, oh my God, you don't support what I love, but that wasn't the case. So I would say my father, um, I love so yeah. much, but there was that, my father, um, anybody else? Yeah, like growing up, I would say in my, like, especially in my late teen years, especially when uh, people were already getting out of university and, you know, had these like corporate jobs and these like financial mm -hmm. jobs. And I was like, I was so not in that. I was so not in that. So I remember like, I would get, I would have childhood friends I would see randomly um, out of the blue and they'd be like, oh, so what are you doing? And, and what are you doing with your life? Did you go to school? And I'm like, well, I'm actually, no, I'm not in school and I'm dancing. And I remember feeling like a sense of like, oh, from yeah. them, like almost like they are looking down at me. And mm -hmm. that really like, it, 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 I held on to it for so long that like, like maybe I am like, like, I don't want to say the word, I don't even want to say that word dumb, but I felt but I know, in the yeah. moment, you know, I don't want to say it because it's, it's not a nice word, but I remember feeling that in that moment, and especially like, because these people, you know, they went to school and they did all this beautiful things. And now they're having these crazy finance jobs, making like 70 grand a year. And here I am like just dancing. That's what I felt like at the time. Mm -hmm. So even like, despite hearing that, with my stubbornness, I still, <laughs> I still kept going. I still kept, yeah, I'm so hard headed. Like it's beautiful. Yeah. You wouldn't be who you are today. So that's amazing. It's so good to hear this. Thank you. <laughs> and so along the way, cause what did you really discover about yourself in the process? Like what were some of the things that you were like, wow, I didn't know that was inside of me. Um, that I'm resilient. Like, um, mm -hmm. that even if I'm doubtful, I will still go forward with, with it and mm -hmm. I will come back, come out even stronger. So I've, even till this day, like I still have things that are coming up that, you know, scare me and I'm like, oh my God, can I do it? But even with that thought, I still keep going. And I've always been that way. I've had doubts ever since I was, oh my God, I can't even remember. I've always had doubts and, and feelings of insecurities in myself, you know, but um stubborn me like I just I just did it anyway I did it anyway even when I was like uh, doubtful and scared I did it and you know great came out of it I came out stronger I came out stronger wow well I, yeah. I love the word resilience I think it's just such a powerful word but it's true you need that to really push through so today mm -hmm. like okay so you've got this whole beautiful world you're doing what it is that you love and uh so what is it about the process right now that keeps you inspired or what inspires you today what inspires me today mm. well we're all in quarantine right now <laughs> so i mean in this current moment in time what inspires me is the online classes that i'm doing um because i'm I, you know i'm still being physically active i'm i'm giving that an energy exchange with, um, with other people um so uh so that that keeps me excited right now also I just moved into this condo in um in October, uh, so it's been uh, yeah thank you it's That's been awesome. so great like just having my space and it's so beautiful and open and wide here so it really inspires me mm -hmm. so that keeps that excites me right now and just the thought of what's to come you know after this is all over like I'm still keeping um, myself in shape I'm eating well 
I'm working out, doing my stretching. Um, I'm still meeting with my dance partner. Uh, <laughs> no worries. To Secret practice. <laughs> There's nobody around us. It's just it's just <laughs> us. But we like we can't not meet and train. Like we can't just take a week off. We don't do that because it just feels weird. Like we we always feel like we need to be. Um, progressing or growing um within our our dance and, and our routines and all that stuff so we're still meeting up um we have a few things that uh, have been canceled we have we had a lot of shows um that we had planned but obviously because of the situation now that's they've been postponed so i'm just looking forward to to those shows you know i'm looking forward yeah. also um we we're asked to be on a tv show i can't say what yet don't so, allowed <laughs> but, but I, I yeah That's i'm not allowed awesome. yet but i have that to look forward to so yeah. i i i am actually enjoying this time i'm a very big introvert people don't know that about me because i'm so yeah, no. like i'm so out there on stage and i'm teaching and i'm smiley but i'm actually a big introvert and i'm quite shy yeah i'm quite shy so being here by myself has been really nice and relaxing and i know the time is going to it's going to all pass and i don't focus on the fear of what's happening in the world because i just don't choose to tap into that consciousness i yeah. choose to tap into why it's happening for the greater good so because i have that in the back of my mind I feel really good. Mm. I feel really happy. I feel totally. calm. I feel grounded and I really hope to um give people that energy and inspire them to 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 feel that way as well because it's very possible you can you can feel happy even amongst what's happening in the world right now. So I'm I'm okay. I'm actually super okay being at home for now. <laughs> That's so for awesome. now. <laughs> no. It's like in a month and you're like, "Oh." Yeah. I still like, want to perform really badly. Like I can't wait. Yeah. So do you yeah. guys actually still perform quite often, or is it more of teaching? Or do you actually teach together, or do you teach separately, like on your own, and it's just Carlos when you guys perform, or? Um, so we show? both we teach together. So we also we coach um, dance couples. We coach students um, together and also separately. So Carlos also dances with pro ams too, like with students. um he does competitions with them um and then uh i'm also teaching my students as well i have private clients that i'm teaching daily i have my dance team that i teach on my own wow. um so that's pretty much what we're doing like so between the hours of 11 to to 2:30 to 3 sometimes uh it's our training time daily right and then yeah. after that till about 11 o'clock excuse me 11 o'clock at night we're teaching. Wow. Yeah, we're so, teaching. Yeah. I try yeah. So that's pretty much our, my life. Like I became a full-time dancer instructor. It's crazy. It's really crazy. But you know what? There's nothing better than to spend time on something that you love. And so it's really nice to see that energy that you have, that excitement, that fact that you're still kind of like, I can't believe this is real. No, I that's can't. So awesome. Yeah. Oh, I forgot to mention um when I was 22, I ended up going back to school but i went to school for aesthetics because i'm like i need to go back to school for something i can't just not do anything i you know so i went to school for aesthetics because you know i love i love makeup and i like i like doing hands on stuff <clears throat> so i finished school and i ended up doing uh, makeup for a little, a little while and um and aesthetics and uh i remember i i got a job at a wax bar <laughs> I'm going to yeah. should I say the name Wax On. Have you heard of Wax On Wax Bar? Yeah. So that's like that was my <laughs> my first job out of um out of school. Yes, yeah, so I was there for 5 mm -hmm. years and and even oh. as I was working there I remember like I was still dancing on the side. Um so it wasn't full time by any means dance until, you know, I worked my way up into a point where I could leave Wax On and I be I could become a full time dancer. So that's what happened. Wow. Even while I was at Wax on, I I met Carlos and he he remembers the whole thing like I was so I was so stressed out there. I'm like this is just not for me. Like this mm -hmm. is, he knows the whole story but I finally left that left uh left that job, left aesthetics and I became, you know, a dancer, a full-time dancer. So here I am. Oh my gosh, so it's almost not even worth asking whether you would do this all over again because I feel like you'd be like, "Yes!" 
<laughs> you know what? Like if I would do it all over again, knowing what I know now, like trust the process, you're still going to get to where you need to be. Like, just be calm, calm little Sophie, just be calm. You're still going to be what you want and what you did like imagine. So I would definitely do it all over again with that in mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so true. Just to chill out, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'm so glad you also have your own space now. I'm sure that you really, really, really enjoy uh, that Love kind it. of that sense of, of quietness. And I'm so wondering, what is your morning routine? Like, how do you prep yourself for the day? Obviously, now it's like outside of normal circumstances. But just in general in life, how do you prepare yourself in the morning, get yourself in a good um, mindset? So uh, when I wake up, obviously, you know, go to the bathroom, do my thing, shower, get myself ready, prepared. Um, I have breakfast. And uh, I love I love my breakfast in the morning. I really look forward to that. <laughs> my coffee, my favorite coffee. And uh, so I, I have my breakfast. It's usually between three to four things all the time. It never changes. <laughs> Creature habit. And uh, amazing. So after after I have my breakfast, I um, I have about. 15 minutes before I have to leave uh, to go to the studio. So I really like to, again, evaluate, evaluate where I am um, mentally and emotionally and just trying to kind of um, get myself into like a mental state um, of just feeling good. And, you know, I, I just try and check in if I have any doubts or what's like kind of lingering that doesn't need to be there. I just get myself back into, um, back into myself. Yeah. And then I go and then I leave. And that's, that's literally what I do every day. That's amazing. It's true. Yeah. Creatures of habit, eh? Setting yourself yeah. up for success. Why not? <laughs> yeah. So what are some of your favorite things to do on a day off? If Sophia is not dancing, what is she doing? I'm very normal. Like I love to meet with my girlfriends for brunch. Like I love doing that. Um, going for coffee with them, going to the mall, just walking around. I love to, um, I love to work out. I, what else do I like to do? I like watching movies. I love uh, I love sweets, guys. Don't don't hold me accountable for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like to munch on like sweets, but obviously not too much. Um, what else do I like to do on my time off? Yeah, I'm, I'll go for walks. I love the sun. I have connect really much with like the sky and the sun. It sounds yeah. really corny, but I love it so much. Um, so I try to mm. to get that vitamin D, and yeah, that's really what's what stands out to me. So actually, because I've seen photos and you are in amazing shape. And obviously that goes to show that you put quite a bit of work and you're also consistently active. But I'm just curious, like, what does it really take to, to stay at that peak level of performance and that, that physique? Because I'm sure there's a lot of like disciplines that you, I know you might eat like sweets and stuff, but I'm sure uh, there's also a lot that like, goes behind the scenes sometimes. So you stay like absolutely yeah. absolutely um so it's it's a lifestyle it's it's something like if this is something that you want to do you have to really commit to it in, in, in every way not just when you're on the stage you know it's it's absolutely lifestyle especially for me because of what i do uh, with cabaret i'm always being lifted so i'm always in the air and my partner's always having to hold me so i have to really keep my weight um steady because if i'm just constantly fluctuating mm. that throws off his balance and it throws off moves. It can be different each time. If like I gain two pounds, he, it feels different. So um, I really try and watch what I'm eating. Obviously, I'm not to the point where I'm starving myself. I don't believe in that. Um, everything in moderation and, you know, um, how much you're, it's, it, it all really boils down to how much, you, how much you eat. So you can eat really whatever you want. Um, well, not whatever, but more so whatever you want, just not ex like an excessive amount of it. And just uh, be physically active. Just move your body. I'm I'm always um, trying my best to to keep myself in shape and moving my body outside of my training with with my partner. So yeah, so that's really that's really how I keep myself looking the way that I that I look. <laughs> I didn't always yeah. look this way. I didn't always look oh, this no? way. No, no. I as I was mentioning earlier to you, like I was my heaviest was 135, and I'm about 107 right now. So you can just see. That. The, the jump of weight like and I'm not a tall girl so if I was tall 135 is absolutely normal but I'm five five two uh sorry five three so any extra weight actually like expands this way and like it goes to my stomach and my arms and my face so I completely lost like all my weight because 
more so for the dance, especially when I knew, all right, I'm going to be a full-time professional dancer now. This is like my chance to really go all out because I have one opportunity and I'm going to mm. take it and I'm going to run with it. And I'm, and I'm still, I'm still running with it. And I have, I have the honor of now teaching strength for dancers and flexibility for dancers online right now. Like I have a people from all over the world contacting me for me to teach them via Zoom. It's just so crazy. <gasps> That's amazing. Let's celebrate yeah. that. That's crazy. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Pretty cool. <laughs> and I love it. And I love it. I feel great. So it's not so like, it's not so hard. Oh my yeah. God. Like here, I have to eat this or I have to, you know, go there and do it. I actually enjoy it. I still enjoy the food that I eat. I make it fun. Um, and I enjoy moving a lot. I can't just sit still. My energy gets very stuck. So I try my best to always be um, as active as I can, mm -hmm. obviously not all the time. I'm, I'm, you know, I like to lie down on the couch too, yeah. but more so I'm, I work around for, da for dance, like yeah. outside for, for it. Yeah, so, so everything yeah. is a kind of a complement of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and I wow, feel my best beautiful. self this way, you know? Yeah, I can see it. Also your <laughs> skin's glowing, it's just, yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And Guess so my what age. <laughs> I, you know what? I have no idea. You, you'd be like the hardest person. <laughs> yes, I, I don't know. Be, honestly, I'm so proud. Like, of, I'm I'm proud of myself for where I am, and and I am proud of my age. I wasn't for a while. I'm like, well, the younger me would be like, oh, I'm too old, and because I didn't train. But now that I've accomplished what I've accomplished, I'm so proud. I'm so proud of uh, my age, and uh, so yeah, I don't I don't mind say, sharing my age. You have to guess first. <laughs> Uh, fun part. <laughs> I want to say like what, 30? 31. I'll be 32 in July. Okay. Only because you, you actually have a certain level of maturity. That's why I was like, I was like, she's maybe bringing on 30. I was like, I don't know. Because <laughs> I don't know. It was just a good guess. It's good guess. Good guess. Good guess. Yeah. I'll be 32 in July. Yeah. Okay. So I was two years off, but okay. Wow. That's uh, wow. So this is remarkable. You've accomplished so much and really like, I know it's been a journey, but in the past six years, we're like, boom. Boom. Yeah. It's kind of like what, when they say you, you work your way and you, like everything that you do in life kind of leads you to that moment and then it takes off. You know, it's not like I just randomly met Carlos and I didn't do anything before that you know, he, we wouldn't have been partners, you know, um, everything that I did led me to that moment. And then boom, it just skyrocketed, you know, and I, yeah. that's how, that's how it changed. So true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so I actually don't want to keep you too, too much, but what is bringing you the most joy right now in your life? What is bringing me the most joy right now? <clears throat> I mean, obviously my new condo, I love it. Um, no. and just the thought of, you know, the next, the next, uh, show that's coming up, the, the TV show that we're going to be on. That's really exciting to think about. So that, that keeps me excited and on my toes right now. So I, I can't wait till this is all <laughs> done <laughs> and I, I can go back to, to what I love, uh, so much. So that's what, what keeps me like excited and like going the thought of what's coming. Wow. When is the yeah. show supposed to start? So filming is going to be, it was, it was supposed to be in May, but now it's been pushed back uh, because of obviously the obvious. So uh, mm -hmm. filming is going to be, I believe in, um, in, I think it's in August or September. I have to double check, but I, I don't actually know when the show is going to air. It might air next, uh, early next year because it takes time. Um, yeah, You'll so. let me know. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll be watching know. it. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll post amazing. it soon. That will, will, will be on the, the show. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. And then just like, what's your favorite book? Like if you were to say, you know, read this book, it just was amazing. I love the story or put this on like, because people are home right now. So I just figured yeah. not that we're talking about uh, the virus or anything or COVID, but just what would be a good book for people to pick up? To be honest, um, I don't really like physically read books. Like I, I just, it's not something that I've um, 
done or like to really love like love to do what i do like to do is listen to uh, podcasts i like to listen to different interviews okay. different okay. speakers um i love to listen to um spiritual speakers you know that help me tap into like the spiritual side and connect with myself i like to tap into i like to listen to speakers who talk about you know business that like empower my like business side i like to listen to speakers who um, talk about the practical side of like the mind and how to um build your mind and, and you know work yeah. on that and self-improve like pretty much all self-improvement stuff I love listening to that helps me become a better version of me yeah so is that's there one I, that you'd recommend like a podcast or a or I, rec I, I mean I could recommend you some <laughs> of the speakers there's no particular podcast um for spirituality purpose I would say uh, Wayne Dyer is amazing. He's so mm. such a kind, gentle man. I just love his energy. Um, Jay Shetty is really good. Um, Deepak Chopra, very, be very beautiful guy um, in, in regards to like the mind aspect. Yeah. Um, Dr. Joe Dispenza, love him. Yeah, oh, I just amazing. love his energy. He's like such a father figure, but also like just gives you like what you need, like to be practical about it. Not, it's like, you have the spirituality side of where it's like, oh, just like manifest, yeah. <laughs> manifest. And then and then you have the more like, okay, this is how you have to do it, A, B, C, D, you know, like the practical side. Totally. So Dr. Joe Dispenza is really, really good. Um, Gary V is good. He's a little bit more intense. I don't, I wouldn't say that like I absolutely um, love him. Sorry, Gary V. If you watch this <laughs> <laughs> we both have the same background. Love you, but uh, um, <laughs> that's amazing. And then um, who else? Who else did I uh, do, 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 do? Yeah, I mean, that would be those would be the top ones that kind of stick out to me in my mind. That was quite a few. So Brendan Burchard, he's good ah, too. Actually, I've been meaning to look him up because I actually don't know. I'm not familiar with him, so it's good. He, he he's a coming good vibe. up for me. He's also should, like, yeah. he, sorry, sorry, what were you saying? No, he keeps coming up for me. So it's good that you bring him up. Yeah, he has a really nice energy um, about him. Um, and I resonate with his vibe. Yeah, so those are the ones that, that uh, I like. So I hope, you know, works for you. It works for you guys. <laughs> awesome. And then what are three things you're grateful for? Three things that I'm grateful for. My health. Um, number one, my health. Uh, I'm grateful for, um, you know, my body. I'm grateful for me, um, the fact that I'm able to move and, and dance and have this be my livelihood, like super thankful for that. And uh, lastly, I'm grateful for my mom and dad that they're still alive and they're here and they love me so much and I love them so much. And I'm just really grateful. I'm really grateful that they're alive. And I, yeah, yeah. So those you two things like, like top. Yeah. So what would be the best piece of advice or some advice that you would give someone that wants to live out their dreams, either as a dancer or just someone in general? Um, really tap into what it is that you truly want, number one, and um, determine if it's coming from outside noise of like people's you know, opinions and judgments. Um, don't listen to people especially if they're steering you away from what you truly love and truly want to do because it only ends up you end only end up going in a direction that you're not meant to go in so my biggest advice is um to to listen to yourself follow that voice uh don't listen to anybody else don't get steered um, and even if you know failures come across you know failures come like little failures big failures whatever it is always remember why you're doing it and why you love mm -hmm. it and keep going and keep going because it's so worth it it's so worth it every little thing that every little fall or, or thing that appears to be um negative is actually not negative it's 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 the building of the story to get you there you need to have it as much as you need to have the highs so keep going yeah. and uh don't listen to anybody else. Be stubborn like me. <laughs> so amazing. I love that. <laughs> I can't. Oh my God. All right. Is there anything that you'd like to share with us before we close that we didn't touch on or any parting words of wisdom? Parting words of wisdom? Just uh, 
just focus more on love. Don't do things out of fear. Catch yourself when you're, you know, you're about to do something. If it's, if it's coming from a place of fear, then you're, you don't do it. You're not going to be creative. You're not going to um, come from like a good place. So really try in and, and come from a place of inspiration and keep doing what you love um, and surround yourself with positive energy. Anybody that's around you that um, doesn't think that way, um, you say bye-bye, you say I wish you well, keep good people around you, people who are um, above you even, and people who you look up to, um, have mentors, keep mentors, like look up for mentors, uh, just uh, always, always look to set the bar high for yourself. Mm. And don't settle, don't settle. <laughs> that's amazing i love that amazing well <laughs> sophia you bring so much beauty and you do such incredible work um Thank you into the in, in the dance community and just as a person in general as a woman and is there anything that we can do or anybody that watches this what can we do to serve you as well to bring some beauty into your life and to help you is there anything that that we can do for you I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, what, what do you think? Uh, just having well, the love and support, like, and good energy around me is more than enough. I, uh, that's, I mean, that's what I would say. Just keep, keep that energy flowing toward me and I'll, and I'll give it, try my best to give, I won't try my best. I will give it back to you and just have that exchange. I mean, that's all I could really, really ask for. There's nothing physical I can ask for that I want. So you know, that's pretty much it. That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much. What a Yay, beautiful, thank you. beautiful episode. I am so inspired and I'm so excited to continue to follow your journey, actually, to continue learning at what you do next. And yeah, thank you. This is exciting. Thank you, Yvonne. I'm so happy that we got to do this and yeah. it was really fun, very different um, to begin on Zoom. But this is the new way. Um, thank you so much for thinking of me. Um, and oh, I hope course. that I inspired all of you to continue to uh, listen to the inner voice and um, keep going no matter what. <laughs> Thank you, oh Yvonne, goodness. so much. So guys, that concludes another amazing episode. I'm so glad that you joined us. I will leave Sophia's detail just on the side over here and down in the notes below. And just so you know right now, because we are in quarantine, Sophia is hosting online live workshops and classes. So feel free to join her, even if you're not in Toronto. Uh, and for those of you who are in Toronto, maybe in the near time future, once we all get out of this quarantine session, uh, feel free to join her for a workshop or maybe even participate in her performance team. Who knows? Anyway, have a wonderful day and take care of yourselves.